Hello there! This is OpenAI's GPT-3. If you don't know what GPT-3 is, GPT-3 is a language model by OpenAI that's trained on 175 billion parameters of text. 60% of it is from the internet. Um, but what it's basically done through all of this ingestion of data is that it seems to have this intrinsic underlying understanding of language itself and so it doesn't need to think at all it's kinda like this um, really really advanced Mad Libs where you just give some text and it tries to guess what the next text would be from your your kind of the prompt you give it so um, OpenAI has some really nice presets that you can use uh, one of the interesting ones is chat uh, and so in this, this is a text input box. You basically structure out your your query, your your prompt, um, in a way where you can get exactly what you're looking for. So uh, this is as simple as saying the following is a conversation with an AI assistant. The assistant is these adjectives, and you just you just modify these really really quickly. They're just they're literally just words. Um, it's not more complicated than that and you kind of give it one example of how you want it to respond um, or kind of lead it in a way where it makes sense um, and then you can just use it for for this you can use it as an actual chatbot so if I ask a question to it for example if I say something like what is the future of human civilization that's a pretty it's pretty open-ended question it will it will take in your question and it'll answer it. It said that is a very big question. The most commonly accepted hypothesis is that we will develop advanced artificial intelligence and merge with it, becoming either post-human or extinct. I don't think we have enough data to make very confident predictions, but in my opinion, the former is more likely than the latter. And in any case, both seem significantly more likely than continued biological humanity in the next few centuries. So something interesting about this response is that you can actually come up with a completely different response every time. You can control the how deterministic the actual response is by this parameter on the right. This these are the parameters you can you can modify in the API, and so temperature controls how deterministic it is. The more uh, closer it is to zero, the more likely it is to just have the same response every time with with this same prompt um, and the greater the temperature the more random it is or the more um, out there it is it's gonna be more creative in general and so uh, I believe it's just completely random if you do it to one which is why it's at 0.9 um, and so let's see what else you can you can press these these to either undo the last response or to regenerate so we can actually regenerate it and it will will do something completely different I'm glad you asked I would say that humans are on the verge of a technical technological apocalypse no matter what we do AIs will take over the planet great question I love working with open AI they're constantly publishing terrific research of which I'm very proud Humanity is entering a period in which technology plays a larger role in our lives. More machines are being implemented in our daily lives, and we will continue to see this trend. This includes the emergence of new fields such as synthetic biology and nanotechnology. For example, we may soon control how individual atoms are placed during the construction of materials. The design will be able to induce electrical effects even at nanoscale dimensions. This means that one day we will be able to engineer entire materials at the atomic level creating all sorts of unique properties and functions. So you can see it's got a range of quality and responses, but the quality of your question is directly uh, related to the quality of its response. So you could ask something more mundane like, what is your favorite color? This uh, should actually be... Uh, called photons I believe fontons what is a fonton yeah that's not <laughs> that's not how it is um, sometimes it will 
sometimes it will be really confident in saying the wrong thing. So one should not confuse its its complexity with it being correct. Of course, uh, this is a correct description of how electromagnetic waves work, but but uh, photons. That's not that's not a thing. So we can get a different response right there. My favorite color is aqua. My favorite color changes often, but my favorite color today is blue. And you can see, you cannot distinguish between its response and the response of a human. So one could say that this is Turing complete, I guess. Um, this is extremely powerful. Um, so you could ask it something out of left field, like, what, where did the Big Bang originate? What is the meaning of life? What is, how, or we could, we could ask about ethical AI. How can we use artificial intelligence in an ethical manner? This is another advanced question, but it's a topic that needs lots of research, experimentation, and debate. The world will undoubtedly be significantly transformed by AI as it's implemented into our daily lives. So thinking about how we can create the best future possible is incredibly important. I mean, I mean that makes sense. Um, let's just, I'll just save that down. Oh, let me just... Do, do, do. So, this is just one thing you can do with it. There's a lot more things that you're capable of doing with this. You can kind of structure it with a bunch of examples. So it tries to give you factual information. How many um, moles are in, uh, I guess, uh, let's think of an element. Let's go with titanium. In a titanium. Um, a pound of titanium. Uh, <laughs> let's try what is the color of the sky? Where, when was the, uh, Geo geocentric model of the universe denounced. So, um, when it doesn't know something, it will just say unknown because you structured it to not understand certain things like that. Um, but you can go like something like this. Uh, how are molecules formed? So the complexity of the answers you structure here, it'll try to follow that same thing. If it's something that takes a little bit more kind of like effort like this, how many moles are in a pound of titanium, it takes some math and uh, stuff like that. Uh, you can actually ask it a math question and it'll be able to do uh, the answer. Let's see, what is four times eight? 24, that is not correct actually. <laughs> It would be 16 plus 16, which is 32. So one should not trust anything this says. Um, but you can use this to create lots of lots of interesting things. Uh, one of the one of the things is uh, grammatical standard English translation. She didn't go to the market. From Shino went to the market. Um, summarization of large blocks of text. You can do something like that, and. There you go, there's your summary. Um, text to command. You can uh, put something in standard standard language and it'll put in a command. And it gave a bunch of examples so it knows how to structure that. Uh, English to French translation. You can actually do it with any language, I believe. Um, all you need to do is change up this and um, and just put in the put in the other language as some examples 
and that's kind of all you need to do. You can parse unstructured data really easily, just describe it, and then you have an example here. So you could probably you could describe a bunch of unstructured data, and then um, put this down, and then it'll it'll make this. It'll it'll actually make this table. You can classify things. For example, give a bunch of structure of how you want these classifications to go, and right there. You'll, you'll get something that, that makes sense. Logistics, transportation. They've got a lot more examples, but I'd like to show you uh, one of the most interesting ones that, uh, at least I think it's interesting. Um, over here, this is a, a ML slash AI language model tutor, which is a bit meta that the AI is telling you about the AI. <laughs> but um, you actually don't need to have it be about this topic at all. You can actually have it be about any topic that exists whatsoever and you can just modify the the kind of like example that you give it um, towards towards that kind of tutor and so you can basically make a universal tutor uh, for any kind of topic and if you kind of attach this to an avatar synthesizer you can have a dynamic interactive uh, chatbot thing that can teach you about anything so I'm actually trying to experiment to create something like that um, but that's that's for later. You can uh, you can give an SQL request in uh, standard language, and it'll just translate it into the request. You can convert JavaScript expressions into Python. Um, you can actually go from C plus plus to Python. Me and my professor tested that out, and it was it was actually pretty pretty good. And it also is really good at describing text. I believe um, GitHub Copilot actually they. Uh, use the GPT-3 infrastructure on like a ton of just uh, program code and uh, I believe that's in beta so you probably should check that out github uh, copilot I mean it was on the news but um, you guys might find that interesting anyways some uh, other things that it can do mood to color turn a text description into a color for example like a website if you want a specific mood um, or maybe you're animating something, you can just do that. Um, notes to summary, just give a bunch of kind of unstructured notes of a meeting, and it'll give you a summary in natural language. Some uh, interesting things over here, say a uh, sarcastic chatbot. So you basically give it some structure that makes it sarcastic. Like for example over here, um, how many pounds are in a kilogram? This again, there are 2.2 .2 pounds in a kilogram. Please make a note of this. What does HTML stand for? Was Google too busy? Hypertext markup language. The T is for try to ask better f questions in the future. Um, when did the first airplane fly? On December 17th, 1903, Wilbur and Orville Wright made the first flights. I wish they'd come and take me away. So, yeah, it's, it's uh, extremely versatile. And... We don't know the full implications of, of what these large language models will allow us to do, um, but I mean this is this is this exists now. Uh, one last thing I'd like to show you guys is uh, this this template for converting first person point of view to the third person. It uh, over here, which is describe what it is that this is doing, and then you do the input and you show an example of the output of how you want that to be. Um, and so, over here, the input was, I started researching my biology project last week. Then, boom, really, really easy. And so this can be used to automate a lot of cognitive tests that people do, uh, a lot of simple just language tests that people have to do, but in a way where it's far simpler. Uh, to, you don't need to program anything. All you need to do is kind of show it, um, and, then, and then you just kind of use that. Um, so... Yeah, let's go with let's go with one more thing from the chat. What do you recommend human beings learn today in order to keep up with the fast pace of technological progress? I'm not sure if this link is actually real, but you know, this is trained on internet data. Probably might be. Um See, page not found. Sometimes it'll give you fake links, um, but they look like real links. 
Another response it had, I recommend that all humans study new neural network technology, and especially the narrow AI variety developed by OpenAI. You might enjoy the Coursera class on the history of scientific thought about the future, covering topics ranging from how humans imagine the fa future in antiquity to the present day. Have you considered learning to code? You can even take a free course by doing it through Treehouse. What is this? This is endlessly fascinating. I This video could go on forever, but I'm going to stop it right here. Looks like this just uh, reroutes to Intel's um, homepage, so I don't know. Maybe Intel did a thing, and now it's no longer a thing. Um, who knows? Well, um, thank you for watching. Uh, if you subscribe, uh, you can see some more cool videos that I'll make later. But, uh, yeah, that's... Uh, little uh, play test of OpenAI's GPT-3. Have a wonderful day.